Hello and welcome to Dinosaur Juice and given that I can't make my normal types of videos I've decided to make a list of all of the cars I've ever driven plus some of the fantastic cars that I've been driven in round racetracks and I'm going to score those cars and see what car will be best for me. So here is the list of cars that I have driven. Green means that I have either owned or owned the cars. Orange means there is a video on my channel about this car. Red means that I did drive it but I couldn't make a video. And grey means I drove it off road or on the road for not very long and there's no video about it. So there is now the pink cars. Now they are the ones I've been driven in around racetracks. Yes, I have been in a McLaren Senna, but the more exciting car is that Jag. The Jag is a prototype car by Myra. It's not a normal Jag. It's hybrid and that hybrid system gives it the performance of a Jag XFR, but it isn't just a normal Jag, so it gets excellent fuel economy. The electric motors can also be used to help its handling. So now let's move on to the first category, which is fun. And fun is definitely what you have in the Westfield, which wins that. It's very sports car biased. Um, then the BMW M2, then the MG Midget, which is fun at any speed, and it has to be because it's fantastically slow. Then we go on to my little smart roaster, and I know a lot of you will be angry that it scores so highly, but it does make some funny noises. The C63 is a C-Class with a whopping great big V8, so it is fantastically fast, but it is quite big and the brake and steering feel is not very good. The MG3 feels very nice but is not very powerful. The Tesla is quite quick but it's not the full monstrously fast one and it is very big and has woeful steering. Then the City Van is quite good fun but very slow. The Fiat is just a normal hatchback. The NX300H is more luxury than it is fun. Uh, the Saxo suffers from being quite an old hatchback. The Land Rover and the Jeep are 4x4s, and this is quite sports car biased. The Toyota Yaris is very, very softly sprung. The Corsa is a bit more in the smart, is awful. The Toyota Aorus Touring Sport is underpowered, and the two Land Rovers are not very good on the road. So now let's add in those cars that I was driven in, but I didn't get to drive. And yes, the they all are very, very sporty, with the least sporty being that Jag. It's just a normal Jag with this technology added on. It's not the sporty XFR, which is why it doesn't score so highly on the sportiness. The Toyota is a lot of fun, but slightly underpowered, and it doesn't sound so good. The Audi is very good, but has an awful automatic gearbox. The Honda Civic Type R has to be one of the best hot hatches, if not the best, but the McLaren Senna has to be the most fun car I have ever been in. Not just because it is ridiculously fast, but also because it stops so well it wants to remove your face. And um, we got to remember there that the blue squares are where I have made an assumption. I didn't drive these vehicles, I was driven in these vehicles. So I assumed how good certain things were. Now let's move on to practicality and it's just as you might expect. The Lexus is very practical, it's very comfortable, it has five seats, it's quite safe, it's got a large boot, it's uh, very quiet so not much MVH. Parking is quite easy due to the tech but it is very large. The actual tech itself is quite dated but still usable, the value is pretty average but it is very dependable being built by Toyota. Same thing has to be said about the Aorus. The Tesla it scores very highly because there is none of the negatives to electric vehicles in my scoring system. The Land Rover is a big SUV and quite practical. The Toyota Yaris may be boring but it is a very practical little car. The C63 is a C-Class with a whopping great big V8. Given that fuel economy isn't one of the scores, it does very well. The M2 is a bit smaller than the C-Class, but also scores very well. The MG3 is a good hatchback, but not as comfortable as that Yaris. The uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee is getting on a bit now. Uh, the Vauxhall Corsa is, well, a Corsa. The Fiat Punto is quite practical. 
the um, Saturn's EV van really suffering here from the fact that this is a scoring system for cars not for vans the Citroen Saxo is uh, well suffering because it's old and that's dated some of the technology and things the smart roadster is not very practical at all with only two seats but it is the most practical car that i own the mg midget has a massive boot but it also breaks down all the time the smart 42 is woeful never buy one the land rover is suffering from being an off-road again uh, off-roader again but it does have a very big boot the series 3 has a slightly smaller boot but it is more easy to park the westfield is the least practical car imaginable so now let's add in those purple cars and see how those compare so we can see that the honda civic type r is very practical uh basically it is just a honda civic with a wing stuck on the back some stiffer suspension and a monstrous engine the jag is also very practical though i would like to point out that i guessed on the value given that i don't know how much a prototype vehicle costs the uh toyota gt86 is a very practical gt car and it therefore beats out the bmw m2 i don't mean gt i mean coupe the audi r8 is very practical it is known as the daily supercar and you can see that given that it is sitting around hatchbacks in practicality scales the mclaren Senna is almost the most track focused car imaginable and therefore is not practical at all the only way it could be less practical is if it spit fire all the time uh burnt all of its fuel was made out of a fiberglass and had no roof which is why it's not quite as unpractical as the Westfield. Now on to the total. Who do we think's won? Well it's the Honda Civic Type R. What a marvellous machine. It is an incredible little thing. But then we step on down to the BMW M2 and it is a great little coupe and I love it and I want one. I learnt to drift in that car at Myra. The Toyota GT86 is also a great coupe, but it doesn't sound as cool. The C63 has a monstrous V8. It's just a shame that the steering is not very good. The Senna is a fantastic driving car, but also fantastically impractical. Same can be said about the Westfield. The Jag is a great piece of engineering, and I think Myra did an amazing job with it. The Audi R8 is let down by the fact that the person didn't pick the right gearbox. The MG3 is a great little hatchback. All that bound by its lack of fuel economy, but that does not matter here. The Smart Roadster is a great little sports car that I love owning. The Tesla Model S is fast and kickstarted that electric revolution that we are currently living in. The MG Midget is a great little sports car, if only it was reliable. The Lexus NX300H is a great luxury SUV and it showed me what a hybrid car could actually be like. It is very relaxing to drive that car. The Land Rover Discovery 5 is a very practical and very big and very capable 4x4. But I did not get to drive it for very long and I would love to drive a JLR project properly. The Toyota Yaris is boring but it is fantastically practical. The Saturn EV van not doing very well because this scoring system was not made for a van. The Fiat Punto was a base spec car from 2008 and therefore does not score very well. The Toyota Aura Touring Sport is massively underpowered and the Corolla is a considerable improvement. The Jeep Grand Cherokee is very old now. The uh, Vauxhall Corsa is not very nice, to be honest. The Citroen Saxo is a fantastic first classic car. You can buy it for £500 and you will learn how to work on a car. But it is dated and more modern cars are a better hatchback. The Smart 42 is awful. Never, ever, ever buy one. The uh, Land Rover Series 3 is a good off-roader and has its own charms but this system is weighted towards sports cars and so therefore it doesn't score well and the same should be said about the long wheelbase one and well thank you very much for watching 
I need to go and save up some money to buy a Honda Civic Type R, and you need to uh, like, subscribe, and share, please, if you could. And uh, I hope to get in the car at some point, but I don't know what's going to happen. But I will be making lots of videos, so until the next one, ta-ra! Bye!